So chapter 19 looks at thermodynamics. So if you remember when we studied kinetics, we were trying to answer the question, how fast is this re reaction going to happen? In thermodynamics, we're trying to answer the question, I is it going to happen? So whether or not, whether or not it will happen. Uh, so we'll look at some, uh, some laws of thermodynamics, which if you've taken physics, you probably know some of these definitions already. And we'll, we'll start off by talking about spontaneous processes. Um, so a spontaneous process is, is it's just I any kind of reaction or process that can proceed without any outside intervention so you don't have to make it happen. Uh, it just goes on its own and it follows the first law of thermodynamics uh, which just says that the energy of the universe can't be created or destroyed. The total amount of energy in the universe is constant. It's another way to think about it. Um, you can convert energy from one form to another, but you can't create it or destroy it. So you can convert it from the system to the surroundings, or kinetic energy, the potential energy, anything like that is fine, uh, but you just, it can, energy can't be created or destroyed. Uh, so spontaneous processes, uh, right, they can proceed without any outside intervention. Uh, if something is spontaneous in one direction, it's going to be non-spontaneous in the reverse direction. And some of these processes will be temperature dependent. Um, so for example, if you had if you're looking at water, um, water can freeze spontaneously on, at, under you know, at cold temperatures, but at room temperature it would melt. So if you took an ice cube and you put it out on your desk, it's going to melt spontaneously. Um, if you took a bottle of water and you uh, put it in the freezer, it's going to freeze spontaneously at that temperature. So you don't have to do anything else to make it happen. Once you set the temperature, then, then, it, then it will freeze or it will melt depending on what it is. Um, yeah, so ice will melt spontaneously. Another example of a spontaneous process um, is looking at how gases like to expand to fill up their container. So if you had gas trapped in you know, side A over here of this container and it was closed off and you could get into B, if you open this up, what's going to happen? Some of the gas will go from here into here. The, the gas is going to try to expand to fill up it, its container. It's not all going to go from A to B. Um, it's just going to expand to, to fill up those uh, both sides of the container now. Uh, so that's a spontaneous process. It will spontaneously do that. As soon as you open it, then it will expand. Uh, so what, whatever. It, right. And then it won't spontaneously go all back from, from A back into B. That's, that would be non-spontaneous. It's not, not going to happen um, naturally, like without any intervention. Uh, so let's see if we can answer some of these questions here. So don't overthink these. It's really easy to overthink this section, but uh, don't, don't do that. Just think about really, really basic things. So. Um, the decay of a piece of wood uh, in, uh, buried in, in soil. So if you took some wood and you buried it in soil and then you step back, would it decay spontaneously? It should, right? It should, that's a spontaneous process. The decay of wood would be spontaneous. Uh, so we'll put spontaneous here. Uh, so that one would be spontaneous. Um, now don't think about it as like, oh, but you got to bury the wood. That, that part, that's not part of the, the process of it decaying. Uh, once it's in there, it will decay. The next one, the formation of sodium, solid sodium and chlorine gas in a vigorously stirred aqueous solution of sodium chloride. So close your eyes and imagine you're at the beach, the beach and you took a bucket of salt water and you start stirring it up. Um, if you stir it up enough, it, it, will chunks of sodium start to form and chlorine gas be emitted? Probably not. Uh, that would be a non-spontaneous process. That would also be the worst day ever at the beach. That stuff is very reactive. Alright, so uh, this would be a non-spontaneous process. That's not going, going to happen uh, without any outside intervention. And then the last one, the ionization of hydrogen chloride. So if you took HCl gas and, will, and, and put it in water, it will dissolve in water. Will it naturally ionize? Is HCl a strong acid? And what does strong mean? Strong means it undergoes complete ionization, so this would be a spontaneous process because it would spontaneously dissociate into ions once it's dissolved in water. Um, so we might have some questions like that on a, on a quiz. Let's see, reversible processes versus, non -re uh, versus irreversible processes. So a reversible process is kind of like a hypothetical uh, situation where you have your at equilibrium and then you take little tiny steps away from the equilibrium, so the littlest step, and then you can just take one that same step, just reverse it, go right back, and you're back to equilibrium. So a reversible process, you're taking infinitely small steps away from equilibrium, and you can exactly undo what you just did to get back to where you are. Now, spontaneous processes are all irreversible. 
some irreversible processes are, are when you, you do something but you can't just undo it to get back to where you were. So for example, if you had gas trapped in this container here and you had a movable um, partition and you can just take this out, all of the gas is going to you know, expand to fill up the container. Uh, if I just push the, put this partition right back in, will everything go back to the one side? No, you just end up with you know, two sides of the container full of gas. Uh, so that's why this is an irreversible process, because if I just put it right back, I don't get back to where I was. So I can't undo what I did to get back to where I was. Uh, it, so a, a, ir in, a, a, sorry, a uh, the reversible pathway, if you pick the reversible pathway, what you could do is take this piston. So you see how you have the piston here? Um, if you pick up that partition and then you, you have the piston right there and then slowly expand it this way, you can undo go back here and get back to where you were. So you can undo what you just did to get back to where you are. So if you remove the partition, it happens really fast. All the gas expands to fill up the container. If you do it this way with the piston, it'll go really slow. It's going to take a lot more work to do that. And so that, that, that would be the reversible pathway, the reversible change. Uh, that's going to, so the reversible change produces the maximum amount of work. That's going to take the, the most amount of work in order to do that.